Hi there, I'm Dr. Bree. I'm a physical therapist and I specialize in pelvic health. And today we're going to do a standing workout at the countertop, which is great for prolapse and pelvic health in general. So I have had requests for standing workouts from lots of people who can't get down on their knees or just prefer, you know, something they can do while they're waiting for their coffee in the morning. So that's what this is for. But first, before we get to the workout, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the little bell so that you get notifications so you never miss a new video. All right, let's go ahead and get to the workout. So what you're gonna wanna do is have a countertop or everyone is so different for height. And so if this doesn't feel like a countertop, your countertop doesn't feel like a good height for you, you could also do this potentially on a really sturdy couch that's like the back of a couch. If the front of a couch is pushed up against a wall, or potentially even the seat of a chair. If the chair is pushed up against a wall, just make sure that whatever surface you're on is super, super sturdy and it's not gonna swish away from you. All right, so what we're gonna do is for our first move, we're gonna begin with a standing cat and cow pose. So cat and cow pose is really wonderful for pelvic activation, pelvic floor activation. It releases the pelvic muscles and it also activates the pelvic floor muscles better than kegels. So we're gonna begin on our elbows. Now, I like to clasp my hands together, but you can have your hands parallel, whatever feels good to you. Knees softly bent. And again, this is where you might need a different height of surface. Just play around and see what works for you. So in this position, my knees are softly bent and my butt is sticking out. It's not tucked and rounded under right now. So release the bum back and you're gently arching that low back, not too much, but a little bit, inhaling. Now exhale, and in this position, your knees can still be bent, but you're lifting the pelvic floor like a kegel, and you're really pulling your belly button toward your spine, and you're letting your back round. Again, inhale, release, and exhale, tuck under. So lifting the pelvic floor like a kegel contraction, pulling that low belly button to your spine, and then release. Make sure you're really bending the knees, and I like to actually swirl my hips around a little bit as I release back into cow pose. And then exhale, tuck into the cat. So rounding your back, lifting your pelvic floor, pulling belly button to spine on that exhale, and then inhale, release. Just one more. And and inhale. All right, very nice. From here, we're gonna find a neutral position. So nice flat back, but you're not rounded and you're not super, super arched. So neutral spine position, knees are bent. Step the left leg so it's right under you and right leg is gonna go back. Keep your pelvis level and your spine long as you lift the leg. So for this, you wanna make sure that you're not super arching your back like this. Keep your spine long and your low belly and your pelvic floor connected and gently drawn in and up. So really active through the pelvic floor and the low belly. I call this zipping up my core. And your spine is long and you are slowly lifting and lowering the leg. Now, strong butt muscles, strong glutes are really important for balancing out and supporting your pelvic floor. So keep going. There's a wonderful exercise for prolapse. It's one of the favorite exercises of my lift members for my lift program. Let's just do four more, four, three, two, and one. And bend both knees, roll yourself up gently, and shake out your legs. Now I wanna quickly, before we go to the other side, let you know that that supporting leg, you wanna make sure that it's gently bent at the knee and it's nice and solid. So strong through that supporting leg. Come back down, flat back like a tabletop, gently engage your core, pelvic floor, and low abs. Right leg is now beneath you, knee is slightly bent, and you are super strong through that core as we lift and lower the left leg. So move from your hip. You're not moving your back, you're moving your hip. Lifting and lowering that back leg, super stable and grounded through that standing leg. Keep going. Strong glutes help support and balance out your pelvic floor. And again, positions 
like this are really great for prolapse because you're not standing up, gravity's not pulling everything down. Everything is supported by your pelvic bones in this position. So keep going, breathe, press down into your elbows so you're not hunched up by your ears with your shoulders. And let's do four more, three, strong through the core, strong through the butt, last one, and release. Instead of standing up this time, circle out your bottom, roll it around, release the muscles. Don't hold anything tight. Just be loosey-goosey, release in booty circles. I love doing circular motions. I think they're so helpful for all of the tissues in your body. They're so great for circulation and blood flow, lymph flow, all of the flows, and energetic flow too. Okay, so now we're gonna move into push-ups. Standard push-ups are often challenging for people with prolapse. So this is a way for you to activate your core and work your arms and chest without being in a regular push-up position. So arms nice and wide. You can definitely use like kitchen towels under your hands if you need to, if it's sharp on the edge of your counter. But I'm gonna turn my hands in just a little bit. Elbows are gonna go straight out to the side, but make sure that you're zipped up through your core first. So strong through the pelvic floor, gently drawn in through the low belly. Body is straight like a plank. My feet are way out behind me, and I'm coming down and exhaling up. Strong through the core the whole time. You are breathing the whole time. Chest is working. Arms are working. Exhale as you come up. Help manage that pressure so you're never feeling like a bearing down into your pelvic organs, into your pelvic floor. Let's do four more, this style. Three, two, strong through the core, keep breathing, one. And then we're gonna bring our hands closer together. I'm gonna ditch the towels. So now they're right in front of me and we're gonna bring elbows so that they're hugging our sides. You might need to adjust your position a little bit. Body's still straight like a plank, zipped up through your core, lower down and exhale up. Lower down and exhale up. So this is really working the triceps, the back of the arms. Make sure you're breathing. Managing that intra-abdominal pressure the intrapelvic pressure, so you never feel that bearing down. You're exhaling with exertion, and core is strong and active. <sighs> Keep going, let's do four more. Three, two, and one. Nice. Okay, we're not quite done with the hand stuff. We're gonna do a really cool side plank move now. So it's like you're in a side plank. My feet are flat on the floor, they're kind of like, Stacked. I think you can't see them, but they're side by side and they're both on the floor. Now you can be on like the knife edge of your bottom foot and your top foot can be on top of it. Just play around and see what works for you. But the key is that you want to make sure this isn't happening. See how my shoulder is up toward my ear. You want to press down into your armpit and maybe you want padding for this. Okay. Press down into your armpit, your body's like a side plank, and you are going to dip your hips down and up. This is working the side waist. <sighs> Breathe. <sighs> so really dipping and coming straight up. Do not hold your breath. <sighs> your core is active and strong. <sighs> so working your arms, your shoulders, and your core. <sighs> Three more. Three, <sighs> two, Last one, feeling it right there. Lifted through your core the whole time. Now that top leg lifts and lowers. Let's do eight, seven, six, five, still pressing into the armpit. Four, three, two, and one. Good, okay, stepping in. Sorry, I'm gonna have to be showing you my backside because I, I have to, so here we go. We go straight into the side plank. Now remember that you are straight like a plank with your body to start. You're pressing into your hand and your shoulder. Don't, press into your armpit too. Don't let this happen. Don't be all up in your ear with your shoulder. Press into your armpit. Body is straight like a plank. And we begin with the lift or the lower of the hip and then up. So hip dips, 
core is strong and active. You're lifted from your pelvic floor on up through your core, feeling all of your waist muscles, the side waist muscles, exhaling as you come up, exhaling with the work, never letting a bunch of pressure build up in your abdominal or pelvic area. All of your core muscles are working together to be strong and supported and to manage that intra-abdominal pressure, which is key for prolapse. Let's do one or two more. If you know me, you know I'm terrible at counting. Just make sure you're even between the two sides. All right, now the leg lifts. Here we go, strong through the core, and lift and lower that top leg. Eight more. Seven. Six. Press into the armpit. Four. Three. Side hip muscle activation. And last one. Ah, oh, good job. Okay, so now we're gonna do a figure four stretch. So I'm crossing my right leg, so my right foot is above my left knee, and I'm sitting straight back. So after doing those leg lifts, the side leg lifts, you probably feel a nice stretch in this move right here. Uh, for me, I feel it strongly on the, the outside of this crossed over leg, the outer hip. Just make sure that you're not hunchy and roundy at your back. You want to sit your bum back. When you're hunchy and roundy, that's a lot of downward pressure on your pelvic organs. It also puts your pelvis in a really bad position if you have prolapse. You want to tip your pelvis this way so that the bony pelvis is supporting your pelvic organs and so that your muscles are all in a really good position. And plus it actually makes the stretch be a good stretch. It's not a good stretch if you're like this. All right, come up and switch sides. So cross that leg over and sitting way back. Breathing deeply, feeling it now on the left. For me, I'm feeling on the left outer hip in that area we were working with those leg lifts. Again, be sure you're sitting way back and hinging at your hips and not just rounding your spine. Sit back. All right, let's do an L stretch now. So step yourself back, inhale, exhale all your air out, and then hinge at your hips. Your hips are right here and here. They're not, this isn't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your hip joints. You are exhaling all your air out and then hinging at your hips, sticking your butt back. Don't round. When you round, there's pressure down, your pelvis is in bad position, and your muscles aren't getting the right stretch. So you're hinging at your hips after you exhale all your air out, and you are stretching. Your body's in the shape of an L, like a upside down L, I guess. And feel your sitting bones, your butt bones, spreading apart and shining toward the back of the room. This is lengthening the pelvic floor. It's stretching the hamstrings. And it's also stretching the back and the shoulders. Feels great. If you need to, and for many people, it's actually even more beneficial, uh, even for your hamstrings, for you to bend your knees just slightly rather than locking them out. So bend your knees slightly and be sure that you can really release the sitting bones up and back behind you, not tucked, okay? So a little bend in the knee is totally fine. All right, come on up, shake out the legs, and the next thing we're gonna do is some mini air squats, okay? So shake out those legs. And I want you to think about that area between the sitting bones that we just stretched. We are going to sit back in a tiny little squat. So your legs can be right under your hips. They don't have to be super wide, especially if that makes you uncomfortable if you have prolapse. You can keep your feet fairly close or they can be wider, whatever you like. But you're gonna be sitting back and standing up. So it's mini. You are not having, I don't want you down here like this. <laughs> I want you to keep it really mini. And I want you to feel 
That is, you come up to stand, you're exhaling, and you're feeling that lift of the pelvic floor, like the gathering up of your pelvic floor muscles. They should feel really like you're gathering up and supportive of your pelvic organs. So gathering up and exhaling as you stand. If you want to, you can have the hands on the counter for gentle support or no support at all. Let's do five more. Four. Three. Releasing back and then standing up. One more for good measure again. You know me, terrible counter. <laughs> uh, and shake out the legs. All right, we're almost done. So the next thing we're gonna do is a supported lunge. Now lunges are actually very, very effective at activating the pelvic floor. Even more effective than kegels when done correctly. If you have bad knees and if the squats, the mini squats were already too much, then try this first. So you're gonna step your legs wide stance. So really step the outer leg, step it way back. Hold onto the counter lightly. Now, of the back leg, step it out to the side now so that you have a, a long stance and also wide so you don't feel tippy. Now, in this position, if you don't want to come down into the squat, then simply lift and lower your back heel up and down, up and down. And just make it a calf exercise and kind of a stretch for the uh, hip flexor. That is totally fine. If you want to join me for the lunge, we're lightly holding onto the counter and we're bending both the front and the back knee and then coming up. So I don't know if you can see it, but my back toes are on the ground and my heel is lifted and we're bending both knees and coming straight down and then exhaling and standing straight up. So make sure that you're not tipping forward or rounding or tucking under. We're going straight down and straight up, straight down, and straight up. We're not gonna do too many, let's just do four more. Three, pelvis is level. Two, one, strong and active through the core. This time, if you're with me lunging, bring your outer arm up and feel how this stretches the hip flexors. Hold it, both knees are bent, you're stretching, and then come up. All right, shake out the legs, and we're gonna do the same thing, other side. So my, my outside leg is stepping long back and then it's stepping out to the side. If the knee pain is too much and you don't want to bend your knees, just lift and lower that back heel and you're getting a stretch of the hip flexor and you're also working your calf muscle. So that's a great option. If you want more, then lift the back heel off the ground and then bend both knees and come up, bend both knees and come up. Remember, we're not tipping forward, we're not rounding our back, we're going straight down and straight up. And four more, three, strong through the core, exhale on the way up. Now come down, both knees are bent, outside arm lifts and you lean just a little bit, big stretch and come on up all right <laughs> shake out your legs and now we're going to end with just a little few hip circles I love to do hip circles with my hands behind my head so don't let your head go forward though you want to press back this opens up the chest and it, it strengthens the neck and you're circling out your hips now, for these hip circles, notice that my knees are slightly bent and I'm breathing. Go the other way. So you're reversing directions. Just make sure you do an equal number of hip circles in each direction. I like to exhale as I circle my hips around forward. All right, our very last stretch is gonna stretch out the front of the thigh and the hip flexors. So there's options. We are going to start with just a basic quad stretch. So my right leg is on the ground, left leg, I'm gonna try to grab my outer left foot and just bring it like this and make my knees be together as much as I can. 
Now, this is often what wants to happen. <laughs> so if that's where you are, that's totally, you know, you can start there, but we want to work toward having our knees together. And it's a lot. This is a lot of stretch for the front of the thigh. Lift your pubic bone up so that you're not like this. You want to gently lift your pubic bone and gently draw in those low abs so you're really connected through the core and that'll increase the stretch you feel right here. Now if you want more and want to go into kind of a dancer stretch, you're going to flip your grip so that you're on the inside of your arch. It's almost like you have a hitchhiker thumb and you're on your inner arch. Now from here, still gently lifted through the pubic bone and you're going to come down onto your elbow. The standing leg on the ground can be slightly bent at the knee and you're gonna kick your foot into your hand. So you're getting this gentle back bend and the hip flexor stretch as well. Okay, nice. And come on up. If you were like, no way, I hated that, then you don't need to do it again. You can just do the regular quadricep stretch. So circle out your bum and let's do the other side. So <clears throat> we bring the right leg up, just a regular quad stretch, of course, holding onto the countertop. But remember, we don't want our leg like this. We wanna to try to bring the knees together as much as possible. We also don't wanna be like this. <laughs> so try to lift your pubic bone, gently engage your core, pelvis is level, and you're really feeling it right here. Now, if you want more, flip your grip, hitchhiker thumb, strong, gently toned through the low belly so that you're not just dumping into your low back. And we go into the dancer stretch. My standing leg on the ground is bent a little bit and I'm kicking into my hand. Little gentle back bend and a quad and hip flexor stretch. Come down, come up and circle out those hips. Nice job. That's it. I hope you enjoyed that. It's a really well-rounded standing routine. We worked our arms, our chest, our back, our butt, our thighs. We stretched, we strengthened, we released, we relaxed. We did it all. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed it and we didn't have to get down on the floor at all. Now, if you have time, I would really encourage you, if you have prolapse, to end with your hips up on a yoga block. I call this hips up time and I talk about it in all of my programs and courses. A lot of my clients love this position. It's really relaxing um, for the pelvic floor muscles and also reorganizes the pelvic organs. It pulls everything back into a really good position. So give that a try for two to three minutes. You can even lay down on the ground and put your feet up your feet up on the counter. <laughs> so you're laying down on the ground with your feet up like legs up the wall pose. That's a really nice way to end this as well. But if you don't have time for that, that's okay. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. As you can tell, I'm a little out of breath from all of that great work. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching. If you liked this, give it a like and share it with a friend. And until next time, remember that if you wanna work with me more closely, check the video links for resources, for my programs, my courses, and ways to get in touch. And as always, eat clean, move every day, and you will shine brighter. I will see you next time. Bye.